becomes president, Hillary Clinton will draw a salary of $400,000. To most of us, that's a lot of money, but it's the money she and her husband made after President Clinton left the White House that everyone is talking about especially the $109 million the Clintons made over the last seven years. Will these numbers be a negative on the trail? Here to weigh in, Democratic strategist Mike McKay and Republican strategist Dan Berger. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. Mike, I want to start with you. Is it any coincidence that these figures come out the same day that Hillary Clinton announces this new poverty czar, somebody she's going to ask every day, what have you done to end poverty? No, absolutely not. For a matter of fact, um, the senator has been pressured to release her taxes for quite some time. What I do say this makes a very compelling argument for the senator to be the next president. The mere fact that if they can take a personal deficit and make it into a nice surplus, as the $109 million indicates, that's a great, great, great reason for her to be the next commander in chief in terms of managing the fiscal affairs of the United States, especially compared to the past eight years under the George Bush administration. Well, Dan, let me ask you, how do you think this will play in the general election? Because, of course, McCain is no pauper himself, but that's a lot of money. I'll have to say, Mike and his firm just proved why he and his colleagues are some of the best political operatives in the country. Uh, the situation is, it's going to play poorly in the general election. It's going to be hard to explain why you make $109 million, explain it to the average person who makes $48,000 a year, uh, I mean, how they can relate to the average voter out there across the country. And, and Mike, let me ask you, because Hillary has done really well with blue-collar workers, that type of voter, are they going to shy away from her at this point because of that? You had a good spin on it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Listen, surprise, surprise, and I thank my good friend Dan for the nice comment, but surprise, surprise that a former president makes a lot of money or former elected officials, whether they be members of Congress, make a lot of money. The fact of the matter is, I didn't hear the same argument eight years ago when George Bush, 43, was money and President 41 made a lot of money as a former president. So this is a non-issue. The senator has been talking about the issues of concern to working class families, to address the mortgage crisis, to address many issues, to address food prices, the soaring cost of college. I don't think this is an issue at all. All right, Dan, let's look at the GOP side. John McCain still not making good headway with conservative voters. What's the latest on that, and what do you think he's going to have to do at this point? I actually think he's done a, a very good job reaching out to conservative voters around the country. Uh, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of people coming into the asset column. Uh, there's still more work to be done, and Senator McCain and his folks have uh, recognized that. But it's a two-way street. The, some of the conservative outliers need to come to the table as well, because there's no way they want Senator Clinton or Senator Obama to be president of the United United States. So they'll meet halfway. People are coming together. Uh, they'll be ready for the general election. Do you think he's going to make a statement through his vice presidential election choice, Dan, and maybe closing some of those wounds? I think that calculus is still going on. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which way they go. All right. Well, Mike, what do you think he has to do? Well, a lot of conservative voters have said they are considering Obama and Clinton. That's got to be good news to you. Yeah, well, I think that's partly due to the fact you saw the New York Times poll that came out yesterday or the other day that said 81 percent of this country thinks it's headed in the wrong direction and that McCain is looked at more or less the same as George Bush for the past eight years. Listen, clearly what um, from prominent conservatives, the senator has problems with his base and they have not rallied behind him yet. And the fact of the matter is that since he's been the nominee for the past month, if he still has problems uniting his base, that does help for Democrats put in potentially into play some red states on electoral map map and make it larger for us come November. But eight out of ten of the major polls across the country still show Senator McCain in the lead. All right, Dan, we'll give you the last word. Mike McKay, Dan Berger, thank you both so much for your time.